Hello and welcome to the news from Bahrain International. I'm Sarah Lebrek. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa received His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa at Sakhir Palace. In the presence of His Majesty the King's personal representative, His Highness Sheikh Abdullah bin Hamad Al Khalifa, His Majesty the King's representative for humanitarian work and youth affairs, national security advisor, and commander of the Royal Guard, His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa, the Royal Court Minister Sheikh Khalid bin Ahmed Al Khalifa, and Minister of Foreign Affairs Dr. Abdul Latif bin Rashid Zayani. During the meeting, local matters were reviewed, mainly moving forward to achieve the goals of the kingdom's progress. His Majesty the King praised His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister's honorable developmental achievements for the nation and his dedicated endeavors to consolidate Bahrain's status and competitiveness to fulfill the people's aspirations for further progress and prosperity. His Majesty stressed that Bahraini citizens remain at the core of all developmental plans. His Majesty the King referred to the humanitarian mission by the Royal Humanitarian Foundation, the RHF, to provide assistance and support to the people in Syria and Turkey key affected by the earthquakes to alleviate the repercussions of the latest earthquake. His Majesty expressed his deep thanks and gratitude to all the people in Bahrain who supported and participated in the national campaign, which reflected the Bahraini society's values of solidarity, mutual support and cooperation with all. His Majesty the King hailed the participation of the PDF in the humanitarian relief mission in Turkey to the Royal Guard search and rescue team and their endeavors to alleviate the suffering of the victims under the supervision and follow-up of His Highness Sheikh Nasser. His Majesty lauded the RHF's role in this regard and stressed that the initiative reflects Bahrain's humanitarian presence and readiness to support all brotherly and friendly countries under various circumstances. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa received in the presence of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, the outgoing Director General and CEO of the International Institute for Strategic Study, the IISS, Dr. John Chipman, the Bahrain based IISS Middle East Executive Director and General, retired Sir Tom Beckett. His Majesty the King welcomed Dr. Chipman and praised his efforts during his tenure at the Institute, which had a positive impact on organizing conferences and seminars that received special attention and appreciation due to the importance of their topics and issues, wishing him success. His Majesty also welcomed Sir Tom Beckett and hailed his efforts in advancing the role of the IISS in conducting studies and research and organizing conferences dealing with the most important regional and international issues. His Majesty the King wished him success in consolidating the role of the Institute. His Majesty commended the level of fruitful and close cooperation between Bahrain and the IISS and its continuous success in preparing and organizing the annual Manama Dialogue, which is one of the most important regional and international forums dealing with various political and economic affairs and security challenges to serve security and stability as well as regional and global peace. His Majesty the King noted the prominent position and global reputation achieved by the forum as well as the wide international participation it generates. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, the Prime Minister and Chairman of the Economic Development Board, the EDB, Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, chaired the EDB board meeting at his headquarters in Bahrain Bay. The EDB's achievements in 2022, its goals for 2023 and progress on the Kingdom's economic competitiveness and developments in line with the Bahrain Economic Vision 2030 were reviewed. His Royal Highness highlighted the importance of increasing efforts and further developing key priority sectors to meet the aspirations of Bahraini citizens. His Royal Highness emphasized the private sector's role as a main driver of the kingdom's comprehensive development led by His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa. His Royal Highness noted the role played by Bahraini citizens in supporting the kingdom's national interests by diligently prioritizing far-reaching developmental goals and initiatives that benefit and support their presence and future. His Royal Highness highlighted that the Kingdom's economic diversification strategy continues to advance through the investment in available commodities and the adoption of effective legislations and policies supporting direct investment and providing quality job opportunities for Bahraini citizens in line with the Kingdom's economic recovery plan. The chief executive of the EDB, Khalid Ahmedan, then presented the board with the EDB's performance and achievements for the year 2022. The EDB succeeded in attracting investments for 89 projects exceeding 415 million Bahrain dinars, 1.1 billion US dollars, which will contribute to creating more than 6,000 quality job opportunities for Bahraini citizens over the next three years. 
The personal representative of His Majesty the King, His Highness Sheikh Abdullah bin Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa, the representative of His Majesty the King for Humanitarian Works and Youth Affairs, His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa, the Deputy Prime Minister, Sheikh Khalid bin Abdullah Al Khalifa, the Minister of Finance and National Economy, Sheikh Salman bin Khalifa Al Khalifa, as well as a number of senior officials and EDB board members also attended the meeting. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa inaugurated the new offices of City Bahrain Global Technology Hub in Manama. His Royal Highness highlighted the importance of enhancing the private sector's role as a strategic partner to increase its contributions to the Kingdom's development goals led by His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa. His Royal Highness emphasized that investing in Bahraini citizens and providing promising opportunities is an essential pillar of the Kingdom's ongoing comprehensive development. His Royal Highness highlighted highlighted the role of financial and banking institutions in supporting the economic sector and positioning Bahrain as an attractive business and investment destination. He outlined how the Kingdom's advanced and innovative digital infrastructure supports financial and banking services technologies regionally and globally. His Royal Highness emphasized the role financial and banking institutions play in creating job opportunities for Bahrainis and highlighted the capabilities of Bahraini professionals in the sector. His Royal Highness noted that the Kingdom's economic diversification efforts continue to advance by developing various plans and strategies for all sectors, attracting investments which contribute to the creation of new job opportunities for Bahraini citizens in accordance with the goals of the Economic Recovery Plan and Bahrain's Economic Vision 2030. For his part, City Bahrain CEO Michael Sawaya has expressed appreciation to His Royal Highness for his commitment and support to the Kingdom's banking and financial sector, which contributed greatly to the sector's development. He also highlighted how strategic partnerships with Tim Keen and the Economic Development Board strengthened the efforts in rendering City Bahrain Technology Hub an employer of choice that helps build sustainable careers for young Bahrainis in the financial technology domain. COO for the Institutional Clients Group Operations and Technology at City, Alexandra Brickman, has affirmed that Institutional Client Group Technology's commitment to continuing to invest in the Kingdom's wider efforts to expand its global footprint. She noted that the continued efforts to develop technological ecosystems and local talents in Bahrain will contribute to greater growth of its teams, which will be supported by a strong value proposition that offers unparalleled career opportunities for Bahrainis in innovative technology domains across ICG businesses. The Minister of Finance and National Economy, Sheikh Salman bin Khalifa Al Khalifa, the Governor of Central Bank of Bahrain, Rashid al Mohammed Al Maraj, and a number of senior officials were also present. National Guard Commander General His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Isa bin Salman Al Khalifa received a Lieutenant General at the Pakistani Army, Lieutenant General Mohammed Asim Malik, and his accompanying delegation. The National Guard Commander praised the continuous development and prosperity of relations between the two brotherly countries, which resulted in the development of cooperation, exchanging experience, and implementing joint exercises and exercises between the National Guard and the Pakistani Army. For his part, the Pakistani general expressed his thanks and appreciation to the nation or to the National Guard commander for his interest in developing bilateral cooperation, which affirms the depth of relations between the two brotherly countries. The meeting discussed topics of common interest.
The chairman of the Shura Council, Adia Saleh, chaired the council's weekly session. The council congratulated His Majesty the King, His Royal Highness, the Crown Prince and Prime Minister and the people of Bahrain on the 22nd anniversary of the adoption of the National Action Charter, noting that this national occasion constituted a starting point for the process of work and progress towards establishing the principles of democracy, modernization, and comprehensive and sustainable development. The Council discussed the reports of the Public Utilities and Environment Committee regarding the division of lands intended for reconstruction and development. The Council approved the recommendations of the Foreign Affairs, Defense, and National Security Committee regarding a draft law ratifying the agreement between the Government of Bahrain and the Council of Ministers of Bosnia and Herzegovina regarding air services. The Minister of Foreign Affairs, Dr. Abdelatif Zayani, met with the UK Minister of State for the Middle East, North Africa, South Asia, and the United Nations at the Foreign Commonwealth and Development Office, Lord Tariq Ahmed, on the occasion of his visit to Bahrain to participate in the meeting of the Bahrain UK Joint Working Group. The two sides discussed the strategic partnership between the two countries and the means to develop them in all fields to serve joint goals and interests. They also discussed the latest political and security developments in the region as well as the current regional and international challenges and issues of common interest. The two ministers headed the meeting with the participation of delegations from the two countries in the presence of senior officials from ministries and relevant authorities. Dr. Zayani stated that the meeting comes at a time of major challenges in the world, including slow economic activity and climate change, as well as the continuous conflicts in the Middle East and Europe, which affirms the importance of joint work with friends and allies to overcome challenges and to sustain the common interests for peace, security and prosperity. For his part, Lord Tariq expressed his country's aspirations to work with Bahrain to resolve the major issues and challenges in the region and the world to achieve global security, stability and peace. He highlighted Bahrain's signing of the Abraham Accords and its support to the efforts aimed at bolstering peace in the region. The two sides expressed the two countries' solidarity with Turkey and Syria following the earthquake, affirming the necessity for the international community to unify to provide relief aid. Dr. Azayani and Lord Tariq signed the joint minutes, which affirmed the two countries' keenness on bolstering cooperation in all fields of common interest. The Minister of Sustainable Development, Noor Al Khleif, in the presence of the Under Secretary for Political Affairs at the Ministry of Foreign Affairs, Sheikh Dr. Abdullah bin Ahmed Al Khalifa, opened the first consultative workshop as part of Bahrain's plan for a second voluntary national review on Sustainable Development Goals (SDGs). The first consultative workshop discusses SDGs that targeted the government sector with the participation of 30 government agencies as part of a series of consultative workshops that will be held in the coming weeks with representatives from civil societies, the legislative authority, academics, the private sector and institutions supporting women's and youth causes. The National Action Charter affirmed in its eighth clause of Chapter 1 the state's guarantee of educational and cultural services for citizens in addition to compulsory free education for the early stages to advance education in Bahrain and achieve the visions and aspirations of His Majesty the King and the people of Bahrain. More in this report. As part of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa's leading project, Bahrain has made many achievements in the educational field whose outputs have been optimized for a better future for the kingdom. The vision of His Majesty the King and the people of Bahrain were framed through the chapters and articles of the National Action Charter. The coronavirus pandemic was the best example of Bahrain's keenness to continue the educational process and achieve the visions of the National Action Charter and His Majesty the King. Also, the efforts of the government led by His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa were evident in developing the educational system. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister was keen on following up on all the developments related to the educational process in various circumstances to ensure its continuity without disruptions. The efforts to develop the educational system would not have been possible without the concerted efforts that always strive to achieve the directives of His Majesty the King. In an exclusive statement to the News Center, the Minister of Education, Dr. Mohammed bin Mbarak Jum'a, affirmed that the National Action Charter was reflected on the development of education in Bahrain, the educational curricula, and the consolidation of academic achievements of students.
has actually laid the foundation for different developments and different aspects of life in Bahrain. Education is essentially one among these aspects. There is also um, a great uh, attention uh, paid by the government of, of Bahrain to uh, investment in the educational infrastructure. So if you look at different schools in Bahrain, you will find that they are uh, solid uh, institutions, meaning that they are equipped with all the necessary facilities to make sure that our schools are perfect. And I would like also to add that there is investment in the information technology infrastructure. So if we talk about the, the, the COVID uh, uh, period or the pandemic period, uh, you'll find that the Ministry of Education, the public and the private schools at the same time, managed quickly to shift to online um, um, education in a very short period of time. So uh, we have managed to activate um, um, virtual classrooms. We've managed to activate specific um, uh, uh, and customized uh, evaluation schemes for this kind of learning. And we have managed to bring all our teachers together and the staff at schools to work in one war room uh, in order to deliver uh, education. And then we gradually started to, to decentralize this uh, operation. So the schools then managed to operate the, the virtual classrooms uh, themselves. Upon the directive of the representative of His Majesty the King for Humanitarian Works and Youth Affairs, Honorary President of the Royal Equestrian Endurance Federation, His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa, and under the patronage of the President of the Royal Equestrian Endurance Federation, His Highness Sheikh Isa bin Abdullah Al Khalifa, the second course to prepare media professional for equestrian events was held. The course witnessed wide participation, including lectures given by a number of prominent media professionals from Bahrain and the UAE and Saudi Arabia. The course discussed media coverage of equestrian events, sports, marketing, social communications, photography and many more and included honoring lecturers and supporting and sponsoring bodies. The organizing committee praised the success of the session and expressed aspirations to hold a third edition. The Ministry of Interior's Tennis Challenger Tournament kicked off, which will be held at the Public Security Officers Club in Glebia. The tournament will be held from February 12th until the 19th under the supervision and organization of the Public Security Sports Association with the participation of 114 players representing 30 countries. All necessary arrangements have been completed to host the tournament by equipping the club's courts with international specifications that conform to the new classifications of the tournament for the fourth time during the past years. The Ministry of Interior had previously organized many tournaments, which reflects its ability to host such international tournaments in Bahrain. And to talk more about that, we have with us on the phone the tournament director, Major Mohammed Sayed. Welcome, Major Mohammed. Can you please tell us about the Ministry of Interior's ATP Tennis Challenger Tour and the significance of holding this at a 125 tournament category this year? Hi, good evening, everyone. Uh, basically, this is the third edition, as you said. We had our last edition, which was 2021 which was uh, Challenger 80. But this time we stepped up to Challenger 125. And basically this year we have a great players of list. And the top of them, the Jason Kovlet, Australian, and uh, the, another Australian, which is Alexei Poprin. And that was the tournament director, Major Mohammed Al sayed Thank you for joining us. Egyptian President Abdel Fattah al-Sisi received a delegation of heads of Arab councils and parliaments and heads of delegations participating in the fifth conference of the Arab parliament. In the presence of Arab parliament speaker Adla Soumi in a statement by the official spokesperson for the presidency, Councillor Ahmed Fahmi, he stated that President al-Sisi stressed Egypt's support for efforts to enhance communications and parliamentary cooperation between Arab countries to exchange experience and advance the process of integration between Arab countries. He also appreciated the decision of the Arab Parliament to focus during the current session on the conference on food security. The attendees affirmed, appreciated, or affirmed and appreciated Egypt's efforts under the leadership of President Sisi and its stances in defending Arab national security.
The Representatives Council delegation concluded its participation in the Fifth Conference of Arab Parliaments and Speakers of Arab Councils and Parliaments, which was held in Cairo. These parliamentary meetings are an opportunity to raise Arab issues, discuss the challenges faced by various countries in implementing development strategies and programs, and push for more cooperation and consolidation in the legislative field to enhance parliamentary diplomacy and the exchange of legislative experiences and affirms that Bahrain, under the leadership of His Majesty the King and his directive, supports joint Arab action. First Deputy Speaker of the Representatives Council, Abdin Nabi Salman, affirmed that the challenge of food security is one of the most important challenges facing the world in recent times. In a speech delivered on the sidelines of the Fifth Conference of the Arab Parliaments and Speakers of Arab Councils and Parliaments, he stressed that food security receives great attention in Bahrain to the support of His Majesty the King and the follow-up of the government led by His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister. He added that Bahrain has recently grown its interest in food security through royal directives to the legislative authority to find solutions that improve the quality of life. He explained that the kingdom is proceeding with a set of pioneering steps in this field, noting the pivotal role played by the Representatives Council, which supports the governmental and international role through the enactment of legislation and the development of current laws that contribute to achieving self-sufficiency in the areas of food, fish, farming, marine wealth and the agricultural sector. Shura Council and Arab Parliament member Ali Abdullah Al Aradi has affirmed that the legislative authority in Bahrain is a key partner in implementing the directives of His Majesty the King to raise the level of national food security through periodic review of all legislative data in cooperation with the government led by His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister speaking at the fifth conference of the Arab Parliaments and Speakers of Arab Councils and Parliaments. Al Aradi explained that the parliamentary document to enhance Arab food security will be a great incentive for the official efforts made by Arab countries in formulating a strategy for food security. He referred to Bahrain's firm position in deepening the framework of Arab support and solidarity to enhance Arab national security and raise or raises levels of efficiency in achieving the requirements of Arab food security.